Hello students, welcome to CMIS online classes. Today, we will start a new chapter from our English literature, chapter 3, Prithvira Chauhan, The Valiant. The word valiant means brave and courageous, and we have heard many stories of Prithvira Chauhan and his bravery. How he fought bravely with his enemies and won over them every battle. As the theme of the story is bravery and courage, we will come to know how Prithviraj did not let his pride go down and fought for his self-respect and honor that made him a hero in everyone's heart. The chapter mainly focuses on the events leading to the marriage of the fearless Prithviraj Chauhan with Samyukta and the events that took place thereafter, the history of Chitorgarh, the capital of Rajputs. Before entering the chapter, at first we will see who are the characters in the story. The characters are Prithvira Chauhan himself, the last Rajput king, Jay Chandra, father of Samyukta, Samyukta, a lady love whom Prithvira Chauhan married, and Muhammad Ghori, who invaded Prithvira Chauhan, and Chand Vardai, the biographer of Prithvira Chauhan. The place where the story has been taken place are the palace of Jayachandra in India and the palace of Muhammad Ghori in Afghanistan. As I told you that we are going to understand the history of Chittorgarh. The history of Chittorgarh is incomplete without a mention of Maharana Pratap. Chittorgarh will never forget the lifelong battle that this brave Rajput waged to win back the fort of Chittorgarh from Akbar, the Mughal Emperor. Chittorgarh was the capital of Mewar the kingdom and seat of Rajput royalty when Maharana Uday Pratap Singh too was in power. Thus, it was the glory and pride of Mewar which Maharana, Maharana Pratap restored from the possession of Akbar. The Chitorgarh fort, the largest in India, dates back to the 7th century. There are four magnificent palaces 19 temples and historic monuments inside this fort. Maharana Pratap was a Hindu king of the Rajput Confederacy of Mewar, now in northwestern India and eastern Pakistan. He successfully registered efforts of the Mughal Emperor Akbar to conquer his area and was honored as a hero in Rajasthan. The son and successor of the weak Rana Uday Singh, Rana Pratap sought to avenge the 1567 pillage of his capital, Chittor, and subsequent raids, of, raids by Akbar. This was in notable contrast to his fellow Hindu princess who had submitted to the Mughals. Rana Pratap reorganized the government improved the fort and directed his subjects to take refuge in the mountain country when attacked by Mughals. After insulting one of Akbar's emissaries and refusing an alliance, he was defeated in June 1576 by Mughal forces at the Battle of Haldiaghat and fled to the hills. Despite the loss of many of his strongholds, he continued to harass the Mughals and urged non-cooperation and passive resistance to Akbar's tax collectors. In the meantime, Mewar declined to a wasteland. In 1584, Rana Pratap again rebuffed emissaries of Akbar who was preoccupied in Punjab. Accordingly, Rana Pratap was able to recover most of his strongholds and died a hero 
to his people. He was succeeded by his son Amar Singh who submitted in 1614 to Emperor Jahangir, son of Akbar. Maharana Pratap was not just a brave warrior, caring king and valiant leader, but also a man of principles. He never tried any unjust means nor parted from the rules of warfare to win over his enemies. Raja Man Singh of Jaipur was the Mughal army general in Akbar's time. Once Maharana Pratap got to know Raja Man Singh's whereabouts in a jungle. He could have easily attacked Raja Man Singh when the latter was busy hunting, but he did not backstab the latter. His distinction of being just was a rare leadership trait. Now this information about Maharana Pratap, a great Rajput king, is enough for you all to understand how Rajputs were. They were not just only brave warriors but also honest to their subjects. Now we will enter the chapter and will come to know more about the next brave leader of Rajputs, Prithviraj Chauhan. And we also come to know what the chapter is actually about and says about Prithviraj Chauhan. Prithviraj III, popularly known as Prithviraj Chauhan or Rai Pithoda, was the king of the Chauhan dynasty. He ruled Sabdalux, the traditional Chauhan territory in present day northwestern India. He controlled much of the present day Rajasthan, Haryana and Delhi and some parts of Punjab, Madhya Pradesh and Uttar Pradesh. His capital was located at Ajmer. Although the medieval folk legends describe him as the king of India's political center, Delhi to portray him as a representative of the pre-Islamic Indian power. Early in his career, Prithviraj achieved military power and successes against several neighboring Hindu kingdoms, most notably against Chandela king Paramardi. He also repulsed the early invasions by Muhammad of Ghor, a ruler of the Muslim Ghurid dynasty. However, in 1192, the Ghurids defeated Prithviraj at the Second Battle of Tarain and executed him shortly after. His defeat at Tarain is seen as a landmark in the Islamic conquest of India and has been described in several semi-legendary accounts. The most popular of these accounts is Prithviraj Raso, which represent Prithviraj as a Rajput, although the Rajput identity did not exist this time. Now we will understand the chapter by summarizing it, what it actually tells us about Prithviraj Chauhan. So let us start summarizing the chapter. The chapter says that Prithviraj Chauhan, the last Rajput leader to rule Delhi, was in love with Samyukta, daughter of his enemy Jaychandra, the ruler of Kannauj. When Jaychandra heard of his daughter's love, he organized a swayamvar but did not invite Prithviraj and ordered that his statue be kept at the gate as a doorman. Samyukt, however, informed him and he came dressed as a doorman and hide behind the statue. He rose from the back and taking Samyukt challenged Jayachandra to stop him taking away his wife. 
A series of battles followed where both met with heavy losses. In the meantime, Muhammad Ghori, a Muslim ruler whose kingdom extended to that of Prithvi Raj, attacked many times and was finally held prisoner by Prithvi Raj. Although Prithvi Raj's ministers advised him not to pardon Ghori, he released him and the very next year Ghori attacked Prithvi Raj and through cheat and deceit defeated and took Prithvi Raj as a captive to Ghori. When taken before Ghori, Prithvi Raj looked him straight in the eyes saying a Rajput would lower his eyes only in death. The angry Ghori ordered his eyes to be burned with red hot iron rods. He was then frequently taunted by Ghori and his men. However, Chand Bardai, his biographer, kept telling Prithvi Raj that he must take revenge for this. One day, Ghori announced a game of archery and Prithvi Raj, though blind, said he wanted to take part, saying that he would hit the target if Ghori gave the orders. Chand Bardai explained to Ghori that Prithvi Raj, himself a king, would take orders only from a king. This boosted Ghori's ego and Chand, through a couplet, informed the blind Prithvi Raj of Ghori's position. And when Ghori gave the order to suit, Prithvi Raj was able to turn in the right direction and with one arrow sought Ghori dead. It is said that Chand Bardai then stabbed Prithvi Raj and killed himself to avoid any further humiliation. So this much is the account that we have in the chapter and in this story. So we have come to know from the story that Prithvi Raj Chauhan was a brave man. He was determined and not afraid to battle with his enemies alone. When he succeeded in capturing Ghori, he did what he thought the right thing to do, regardless of advice of others. This led to his defeat at the hands of Muhammad Ghori. Even as a captive, he did not bow down before Ghori. His skills with the bow and arrow helped him defeat his enemies. On the other hand, Ghori was a cruel and ungrateful man, as was proved by his actions. Despite the fact that Prithvi Raj had pardoned him, Ghori did not repay him with the same kindness. Instead, he made him a prisoner and had him blinded. And so, these accounts about Muhammad Ghori and Prithvi Raj Chauhan are helpful to you all to understand the chapter. And I hope that now you are able to complete the question and answers also from the chapter. I have already provided the list of difficult words from the chapter that you have to find out the meaning of those words and write them down in your notebook and also complete the questions and answers in your notebook. Thank you so much. This much for today's class.